guy, I know. I'm, st I'm too smart for words, what can I say? <laughs> Alright everybody, uh, welcome to the, uh, I don't even know, what are we up to, uh, Nate? It's the 17th, 17th. 18th, 17th episode of the On Blair Show, as you see in front of me right now. Um, I have John Turk with me, um, you all know him as Sub-Zero, he pretty much put a face on Sub-Zero. Um... I'm going to just go quickly before we get into him. Uh, we're going to give you a rundown of the going-ons. Uh, for MLG Dallas, um, whoever is doing the teams, the teams are still staying the same unless they can't stay uh, for the rest of the tournament, which they're holding the team thing on Sunday. Therefore, I, know, I was already told 16-bit and Dizzy uh, have to leave to go back to Chicago on Sunday, so... Pretty much they're going to have to find either replacements or change their flights. Um, other things that are going on, uh, Mr. Homeboy Tyson made a couple of new tracks. Um, calling out our buddies uh, Chop and uh, Eddie Pistons. Um, Natus, you got anything? Um, uh, shout out like usual to all the sites. Uh, let me run through them real fast. More to Comic United, Tessa and Mike, Trevor Yukin. Oh, definitely show where you can post up a front page article on this again uh, with the past archived episodes that we have put up. Also, Smack, MK Bible, The Gamer's Edge, uh, dbmugin.webs, uh, MK Server, the Russian website for Mortal Kombat, uh, the Video X game, I mean, the Video, yeah, the Video X games. Uh, visit their site also, guys, for the, uh, you know, chance to go over to, the, to their, their, like, Evo kind of event they plan on doing uh, next year. Uh, Dominion Met the Gaming, Mortal Kombat Online, TRMK, uh, Ultra Spec Cables, Combat Network, uh, MKMP uh, uh, Free Forum, uh, MK Universe, it's the Mortal Kombat website in Luxembourg, uh, Empire Arcadia, and uh, Total Mortal Kombat, that's down in Australia. So, special shout out to all these guys out there. Uh, everybody, please uh, retweet the message out. The show is live. We have John Turk on. If you guys have any questions, start sending them on Facebook or Twitter. If you don't have us on Facebook or Twitter, follow us, like us, uh, do whatever you got to do. Shout out to Trip Sessions, our sponsor group. Visit their Facebook page down in the info section in the bottom. All that stuff I just read out is all in the info section. So when you guys have a chance, go down there, check it out. You know, do what you got to do for that. Um, that's pretty much it. All right, John, um, James, go ahead. Okay, you can breathe now. Yeah. All right, uh, <laughs> without any further ado, guys, I introduce you to uh, John Turk. John, hello, how are you? Good, real good. Hey, everybody. Um, we're going to get right into it. Um, how did you get involved with Mortal Kombat? Oh, man. Well, uh, actually, I was a policeman for 10 years out in the Chicago area, and uh, a lot of people just kept telling me, why don't you ever get into acting or anything like that or modeling, and I just kind of blew it off and ignored it. And then one day I just figured out oh, what the heck I'll give it a try and I went to an, uh, an agency in the city here and they took me on and sent me on an audition right away and it was for Mortal Kombat and right when I went in uh, they liked the way I looked and, and was built and stuff and they, the main thing they were concerned with is if I had a martial arts background and I have a black belt in Taekwondo and I did some uh, competitive fighting back in, uh, in the early 80s so when I went into the studio they had me do a few moves and uh, apparently some of the other actors weren't into karate or didn't know any kind of martial arts so filming took a long time so when I went into the studio and did several moves they went like that real quick and they were kind of excited that I, I could do a lot of the stuff that the other actors couldn't so filming went faster so and they kind of hired me right after that and uh, it just kind of snowballed from there all, all the other characters kind of fell in line and they uh, started just throwing all kinds of wigs at me and mustaches and makeup and outfits and I just kind of grew into other characters as well and then the Sub-Zero took off and uh, kind of created its own game after that with the mythologies and and so forth so it was kind of a pretty interesting uh, deal since it was my first audition and anything I ever done as far as acting so when uh, mythologies broke into like little acting segments in the middle it was really my first experience doing any kind of on-camera work or anything like that so that's kind of how I got started and you uh I mean obviously uh, you know I've, I've heard that you've I mean you were in I believe Batman um have you done a lot of other roles now you're getting roles or 
Yeah, you know, I, I live in Chicago, so we always kind of get the scraps. You know, all the main parts are cast out of L.A. and New York. And uh, they do a lot of what are called under five spots here. So, fortunately, we don't really get much of a stab at the main parts. And when they come in town, I'm, I'm more of a character actor, so I always get pigeonholed into the, the bad guy roles or, you know, the mob guy or something like that. And Or, you know, I, have, I can speak with a Russian accent, so I sometimes do parts like that. But... Uh, yeah, I was in Transformers. Uh, I was in that as well. I uh, had a part in over there. I got in a fight with Shia LaBeouf. Uh, I did the movie The Break Up. I was in uh, the deleted scenes in there. I had a kind of a cheesy little role with Vince Vaughn, but it was fun. Uh, Prison Break. If you go on IMDb, you can pretty much see everything I did. I'm, I'm under John Turk number one, so I got a couple stuff in the works right now, but uh, doing another Mortal Kombat film, I was hoping maybe to get a cameo on that, but... Did they ever approach you for it? I mean, that's one of the questions I've asked other people that have played the characters in the game. Uh, you know, yeah. it kind of seems like they, I don't want to say they blew smoke at people, but, you know, it seems like they, from what everybody's saying, they kind of said, oh, yeah, 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 we want you, we want you. And then at the end, nothing kind of materialized. Yeah, no, they never even uh, called me or considered me. And uh, I just thought it was kind of weird. And especially, you know, rec you know, more recently, some of the other movies, at least a cameo role or something since I was... The original Sub Zero, and I, I'll be honest, it's it's that's flattering. I love it. All these fans contact me. I, I don't get aggravated at all. I mean, I, I enjoy talking to them. It's it kind of uh, makes me smile to see that people still play the game and they really enjoy it. So, anybody out there, I'm gonna I'm, I want to start a, a separate Facebook page just for Sub Zero since I get a lot of people contacting me on my regular John Turk name. But there's somebody else I think that has the Sub Zero logo out there. So I got to think of another another tag for it on Facebook so I can get more people talking to them specifically about the game and such so well you could just go with the the real sub zero yeah <laughs> the real sub zero now I mean honestly you know I could say from you know working on the games over the years you uh you've kind of you know you've been defined as the face of sub zero um now if you had to choose uh, which direction Sub Zero as a character can go? Would you prefer the bad version or the good version? Because as you know, one got killed, the other came back, and the right. story kind of the story kind of morphed. Um, right. Which way would you prefer the character go? Well, you know, I um, I, I like I believe it or not, I like to play the good guy. But you know, I think you really you attract more audiences when you have a little bit of a mix in the in the character. I like I like what they did to Batman in the Dark Knight. They made him. A good guy but they also made him a little dark as well so I think you can do that with Sub-Zero and and you know he can be the hero he can be the good guy but he's got to have a little dark side that he needs to pull back every now and then I think that would attract more people to the character which I think what they had in you know in, 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 uh, in Mortal Kombat 3 and Mythologies had a little of that and uh, I, I think they need to kind of keep with that that style of Sub-Zero I think you really can't have just an all-out bad guy or an all-out good guy. It's got to be a little mix of, of both. You know, he's got to be human as well. So, a little human content, rather. You, uh, do you stay in contact with any of the other actors at all? Uh, you know, just Brian Glenn and I are pretty good friends. We, we talk every now and then. He's in Vegas, though, and uh, I'm here in Chicago. Uh, honestly, I got along with everybody. I thought everybody was great. I talked to Rich DeVizio once in a while. He's here in Chicago. We, we email back and forth. Uh, John Tobias and Ed Boone, they're pretty busy guys, so, you know, every now and then, you know, uh, we've, we've talked and they've had some stuff come out with the game they've contacted me about. Uh, one of the other guys that worked on the game, just technical guys, is a guy named Josh Sue. He lives right in my neighborhood, like a block away, so I see him all the time. He's a real good guy, but, yeah, pretty much, uh, I don't talk to, uh, anyone else other than those people, but everybody kind of had, see, the thing with Mortal Kombat that was weird is... All of us were in the game, but we all filmed separately. So, like, the only people I really filmed with were Rich, uh, Leah Montalano. Um, there was another guy named Mike Garvey who played Raiden. And uh, I, I became friends with him, but he moved to L.A., so we kind of lost touch. But there's uh, only until I did Mythologies did I really have any interaction with a lot of the other characters. But, you know, MK3, 4, and... Uh, some of those things, it was just all in the studio, you know, sticking the little dots all over me and against the green screen and the orange screen and just uh, really all myself. So 
I really didn't work with too much of the other actors. The only time I really met some of them was when we did trade shows. I met Carrie, Carrie uh, Hoskins at a trade show. She was really nice. Uh, uh, yeah, everybody was really cool, man. It was one of those one of those things that was a great introduction to to the business. And uh, you know, I thought, wow, this is great. You know, I hear all these bad things about you know acting and you know people in the industry, but I didn't have that when I first started out. I've seen it now, but <laughs> I didn't experience it as as I did Mortal Kombat. I think. You know, mostly you know, Midway's a Chicago-based company, so you have a lot of grounded people in in Chicago. You you, you know, you have a lot of people, around, but people that I met were pretty good people. So, now were you uh, were you doing the police thing at the same time you were doing the the filming, or was that pre or? Yeah, no, I did. I I was I was a cop uh, for most of the time. I did Mortal Kombat, at least the filming and the physical stuff, and then uh, I left in nineteen ninety eight. So, uh, 90 to 90, end of 98, and I mean, it was pretty much done, and you know, I didn't do any, uh, anything in the studio, and unfortunately, they went to all that digitized stuff, so yeah. I kind of pulled out of there. So I got to ask you, did you ever pull somebody over, and they said, yo, there's no way I'm getting pulled over by Sub-Zero? <laughs> no, I, I never had that happen. I had, I had several stories that were pretty comical with the whole MK thing, uh, I, I, I remember I was on a date shortly after it came out, and uh, a girl and I were just driving down the street, and I noticed this arcade, and I knew nothing of the games. I just I just had done it, and uh, I knew it was coming out. They called me and said the new game's coming out. You know, you should see it at the arcades if you're in an area and you, you find one, go check it out. So I told her it was my first date, and I said, hey, you know what? Let's stop in this arcade. I want to see if this game is is there that I was in. And we walked into the arcade. And it was, Every kid in the, in the room was at one game, and I, I couldn't see what it was. I said, well, let's go see what that game is. And I looked, and it was Mortal Kombat 3. And the girl looks, and she goes, is that you? And I go, hey, man, the kid's playing me. And I started laughing, and uh, my, my date taps the kid on the shoulder. Everyone there is standing around, and she says, hey, man, you're pl the guy that you're playing is standing right behind you. And the kid stops, and he looks back at me, and he says, yeah, you look a little like him. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you, get, do you get recognized still? I mean, is, I mean it, it's not like you're, uh, you, you, you're not easily recognizable, you know, to at least to an MK player. Right. No, actually, you know, the, just recently I moved into a new building in the city, and uh, Uber s stopped it as he was moving my stuff, and he goes, man, he goes, this is going to sound really stupid. He goes, but are you Sub-Zero by any chance? And I just looked and I started laughing. I go, hey, get a good eye. I was. So we just kind of started uh, talking a little bit, and he was asking me a lot of questions about the games. Yeah, a lot of people ask me, you know, a lot about secret moves, and I really don't even know the secret moves. They just they tell me these moves to do in the studio, and I do them all, and they never tell me, okay, this is going to be a secret move. So a lot of people are like, oh, come on, man, tell me the move. I'm like, I don't know any of them. They just they don't tell us anything. We just go in there and film, and you know, and, uh, and and do our business and and kind of get out. So, uh, yeah, I've had several people recognize me, uh, more so on uh, just Facebook. People contact me a lot. I would get, people would see my website. I have a personal training business, so a lot of people contacted me that and asked, hey, man, are you the same guy that played Sub-Zero? It's funny, I, I, I'm i kind of shocked at all the, how big the game is still in Brazil and in Russia. And yes. Yeah, some of the Eastern Bloc countries, I get a lot of kids from that area contacting me, and uh, especially like in Brazil too. So it's it's pretty cool, man. I'm really glad I was part of it, and have no regrets. What uh, what's the uh, what's the deal with your uh, your business? What what is it? Uh, training or? Yeah, it's uh, personal training. I've always been in sports my whole life. I've had some injuries, pretty bad setbacks, couldn't continue on, but. Uh, I just always been physically fit as far as liking to pursue it, and uh, I left the police department. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to pursue more acting. Uh, our friends like Brian Glenn was one of them. He lived in the neighborhood where I was at. She get into training, you know. I have a degree in exercise science, and I said, you know what, I'll give it a try. And it just kind of took off. I started, you know, put my name out there and. Know, marketing and things like that and then now it's become a full-blown full-time business and acting uh, in Chicago you kind of is a part-time thing unfortunately because not much comes through here and when it does like I said it's a lot of you know under five stuff but yeah that's kind of where it's at right now with the training I want it I love the people I meet it's uh it's a great profession I, I make my own hours I love being in the gym I never get sick of it uh, it's uh, something I love to do so I just 
kind of got lucky, man. I got blessed in finding another career that I could fall into and I like a lot. So, well, you got a a, a link. What's the website? Because uh, Natus, you put that website up in the uh, in the chat for these guys. Yeah, sure, it's uh, it's uh, www.fearlessfitnessltd.com, and you can kind of see uh, some of the stuff I got. I'm come out video I made a commercial it's, it's me working out and and, uh, and, and I also uh, I, I teach boxing as well and so it's got me doing a little boxing on there I can't oh, kick nice. uh, as far as full force I got a pretty bad right knee I've had eight surgeries on it oh damn and now so unfortunately that's one of the reasons I left the police department is I I got hurt on the job pretty bad so was that during after duty no yeah it was I was on duty okay pretty good so you get that up Danny okay yeah, yeah I, I posted it you got some questions I'm sure by now uh yes but I'm trying to do a few things so Filter I can't, I can't okay. get to them yet okay um so uh, n let me ask you and I've asked this to, to other people that have been on if you were given the opportunity to uh reprise the role would you uh yeah the only thing is is you know is one of those things where uh can't do it because it's obviously Mortal uh, Ed Boone. I think has the rights now. I don't know if John Tobias. I'm sure John Tobias does too. But I know Ed Boone still works at Midway. John Tobias went on his own. But yeah, I would. I would love to. I mean, uh, probably have to do more hands than anything now. I just not good with the with the knee and and stuff like that. So, but uh, yeah, I would. Uh, I would love to. Now, uh, I mean, I'm sure you obviously, like I said, you've seen uh, like MK3. Now, if you look at the graphics comparing uh, MK1, which was truly digitized, to uh, this new painted look, uh, do you have a preference as far as the more realistic or the more cartoony look to it? No, nah, I like the more realistic. I liked when we did it. I mean, I'm not just saying it because we were in it, but it just it looks more more believable. I mean, a lot of stuff now they got these movies even now where it's they're using digitized characters, and it's just, it's not the same. It's, you know, I mean, hey, uh, Avatar was, was, you know, good to watch, but you, you just, I didn't find myself really getting into the movie as much as I, I would as when you watch a movie with a Daniel Day-Lewis or a Gary Oldman. It's just uh, completely different. So I, I do like when they have people in the roles and not digitized or anything like that it just it just seems more believable you see an actual person doing it especially if you know it's a person doing it like all the moves you see me doing in that game I did them you know all the kicks the punches the flips um, and there were even a few moves in there that weren't they, they took out so you know it's it's fun you know especially if you know hey this guy's really doing this stuff on here um, you, you mentioned movies. Uh, favorite actor, favorite actress. Favorite actor. I, I love Christopher Walken and I love Gary Oldman. I think those two guys are my my favorite actors. Um, actresses. Uh, yeah, I never really gave much thought. Uh, you know, you always kind of want to kind of build yourself after another actor, a, a male that I like. But, yeah. Uh, I, I I would have to say. Uh, I like Meryl Streep. I think she's great. She's a great actress. Uh, probably Meryl Streep, I'd have to say. She always does a great job in anything she does. She does a wide range of characters and uh, and does a great job with it. So I'd have to say her. What's your favorite Christopher Walken movie? He actually, ironically, he uh, he actually used to live about 10 minutes from my house. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, yeah Dead Zone, probably, yeah. Dead probably. Zone? favorite dead zone or suicide you know, kings and uh uh true romance too he was great in that true romance oh yeah well actually for me uh what's his name uh dennis hopper dennis hopper stole that with that with that yeah. with that line of that movie that that yeah. made my that made my the movie the old my all time one of my yeah. all-time favorite movies as soon as he asked for that chest you know what's all going downhill <laughs> um as far as uh, you know, your acting. Do you have anything up and coming that you can talk about, or is it pretty much stuff on the wraps? Or uh, it's it's not. It's, you know, one of them's a film. A guy I did a movie with is you know uh, considering me for a part in there. He's pitching it to uh, people in uh, L.A. right now. It's a movie about you know uh, flying and stuff like that, military type stuff. Um, and that's the that's the only thing I got going on right now. There's another one. We're actually doing another game. This one I got can't talk much about. But another guy's doing a video game, and I play like a uh, 
a business type white collar bad guy in it. So it's the first time I actually would be a role with a suit and a tie. So I don't right. do too many of those. <laughs> They're like Sub Zero in uh, Wall Street. Yeah, ex that's kind of what it is, right? Yep. Um, you uh, you married? Yeah. Yep. Kids. I have a wife. Uh, her name's uh, Julia, and, and she has a Facebook page too. It's uh, Julia Shalom Jordan. That's what she goes by. She doesn't. She uses a uh, different name, but she doesn't use Sub Zero as the last name. No. <laughs> <laughs> Every now and then, I get karate chop. Yes, she's married. My wife is pissed now. Sorry, he's married. <laughs> she likes Brian better, so she already, he, he just said you like Brian better anyway. So don't worry oh, about it. Oh, why do you say? Why do you say that? <laughs> the mic was live when you said it. He heard it. So uh, out there in the chat world, Limbo Dog, now you like you got knocked down to the lowest run of the ladder. I got a guy in the chat that's been stalking my wife out every week, telling her he, she loves him. And uh, so now you're even you're not even on the ladder no more, dude. Oh uh, man. Um, but yeah, so I mean, you know, you you, you did the games. Um, I gotta ask you, like I asked everybody else, how did you find out, or was it just kind of like they cut it and they just said, "Sorry, dude, we're not." You know, we're not using actual people no more. Well, um, they didn't really, like, tell us. They just know that after they, they stopped making uh, the games at a certain point, and they just kind of put everything on hold. I think Midway at the time was doing a lot of cutbacks and and, and uh, personnel, so they the game went on hold for a while. And then uh, actually never got a call. They never said anything. They just kind of said, uh, you know, we'll call you if we need you, and that was really about it. So, uh you know, this, this the whole business is, you know, I've learned a lot. One of the things is you learn to get used to rejection. I mean, you know, auditions and everything else, you're getting rejected constantly. And, and the thing about it is, is you don't get any feedback. No one tells you this is why we don't want you for the part or anything. So if you're not a secure in who you are, you're going to have some issues. But luckily, I, I could care less if, you know, why somebody likes me or doesn't like me. I'm going to be who I am and, you know. Every, you know, that's the thing about being a person, you know. Some people like you, some people don't. And if I lived my life worrying about it, it'd be miserable. But, you know, I got a lot of friends and, um, you know, good family and keeps me grounded and, you know, kind of the way it is. Now, you said uh, growing up you played sports. Uh, any, I mean, college ball? Uh, what sports were you into? No, you know, I, I started... Uh, I, I wrestled when I was younger. I, family down the street from me was a big wrestling family, and I kind of got into it. So re when I was really young, like you know, seven, eight years old, I was going to wrestling tournaments, and uh, I did it through grade school, junior high, and then quite honestly, I, you know, I just every time I turned around, I was getting some new skin disease or skin infection, and my ear pulled or ripped, and cutting weight, you know, and I'm already a small guy. I just got sick of it, so I, I gave up the wrestling, and that's kind of when I got into martial arts and. I like that a lot. I, I didn't pursue football. I, didn't, I was a late bloomer, man. Every, back when I was younger, you know, I'm 50 years old, so when I was in high school, they didn't look at speed very much. It was all how big you were. Yeah. And uh, when I was a freshman in high school, I was 5 feet 95 pounds. When I was a sophomore, I was 5'1", 100 pounds. So football, I couldn't even continue to pursue it. I was so small. So that's what got me kind of into, into martial arts is, uh, you know, you didn't really have to be any certain size to go into tournaments. They had weight classes and things like that. And uh, so I started, you know, doing that and practicing martial arts and hurt my leg really bad doing that. I, I got swept in a tournament. A guy did an illegal sweep instead of hitting me from the back of the knee. When I was up on one leg, he kicked me from the front of the knee and Ow. pretty much trashed my whole knee out. So uh, I've had eight surgeries total. Four, four after that one, it was fixed. And then when I was a cop and got hurt, I re-tore everything that that guy tore back in the early '80s. So yeah. my life has been a has been a lot of injuries between sports and everything else. I've had eight knee surgeries. I've had elbow surgery. I've had six concussions. Forty stitches in my chin. Wow. Eight in my How did you get forty stitches in the chin? Damn. Yeah. Fight in college. I was yeah. just that, oh, good. You, you you just got me to your second my second question my follow up to this, which is growing up. Were you a fighter? Were you a quiet kid? Were you the jock? Were you the burnout? Uh, what you know, type I, of kid I, were I you? Wasn't, I was kind of. I got along with everybody. I really couldn't. I was more of a jock, but you know, I didn't. I didn't look at burnouts and go, "Oh man, look at those dirt bags" or anything like that. I mean, people are people. I was one thing I got to say about myself. I I really wasn't prejudiced to any one person or 
you know, type of person. I, I, I pretty much got along with everybody. It's kind of the way I am now. Um, I found myself hanging out with people that had a lot of the like interests, you know, sports and stuff like that. Uh, did I, I got in fights, you know, I was one of the kind of guys I didn't turn down fights. I definitely didn't start them, but you know, a friend got in a fight. I was, you know, there to help him out, back him up and you know, just the way it is growing up, you know, it's different nowadays. You can't really, you can't do that no more. Can't do that, man. You know, when I was a kid, you got in a fight, it was fist fight and, and it was over with. And actually you became friends with the guys you got in a fight with now. Any idiot can grab a gun and shoot you, and it's like, you know, they see everybody on TV. They even turn the gun sideways and think they're cool. I mean, it's just yeah. it's so stupid. Being a cop, I saw so many wannabes and so many kids that are misled, and it's just it's kind of sad when you see it. And uh, time is definitely when I grew up in more of a an age of, uh, you know, where people were just life wasn't as hard. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't have beepers. I remember my phone was a. Uh, a dial phone with a you know whoever had the longest cord was the you know cool at the time you know? <laughs> the, ro the rotary dial the rotary yeah and then you know never grew up on it yet we didn't have video games first video game was pong so it's I, I see kids now and I I feel bad for them with everything they're going through with just the social media networks they're great and but in one way they can destroy someone's life so well yeah I mean you know I don't you I don't want to make it a downer but I mean like I mean I remember I guess it was about a year ago or two years ago there was a girl on Facebook and the girl's mother started screwing around with a girl that was her friend uh -huh. that you know basically the humiliator and the girl wound up killing herself over this and they and I think they charged the mother you know yeah. for it you know it's it's and, you know, one of the things with the show that I try to, you know, I try to do is show, you know, I mean, like you said, you know, when we used to go to the arcade back in my day, you, there was no problem with getting into a fight with somebody in the game, you'd fight, but you know what, the next, next weekend you were in the arcade and you guys were hanging out, best friends. Right, right. You know, right, and, right. and now these days, I mean, that guy's going to leave, next week he's going to come back with 19 of his friends. Yeah. <laughs> And right. they're all going to wait until you leave, and they're going to jump you. Right. Uh, or he's going to sit in a movie theater and shoot everybody. Exactly. You know? Just crazy. Yeah. You know, it's 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 definitely, you know, the and, and I, it kind of it kind of sucks because, you know, growing up myself, I never wanted to be that old dude that, like, <laughs> when you were getting preached it, Right. Of the back in my day stories, and you were like, "Dude, just shut up." It, right. You don't know what it was like, and now I'm looking at it, and I'm going, "You know, I could, you know, the stuff that goes on, I could have never foreseen stuff the way it's going now." Yeah, and everything goes full circle. You know, it's kind of weird. You know, look at my dad, and I, you know, when he used to tell me how long it took him to get to school, you know, he'd walk ten miles in the freezing cold rain. My dad's from the Middle East, so you know, they didn't even have cars back when he grew up, and he grew up in uh, in Turkey, so. It's uh, it's different, you know. I I, I had kind of had a mixed upbringing with my parents, and uh, so I, I have a little bit of uh, culture on one side, and it's uh, it's 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 interesting, you know. It's I look at uh, a lot of uh, kids nowadays, and it's there's everyone's so you know image conscious and body conscious, and it's uh, you know I'm in that profession. I'm in the body conscious professions, but. I look at it more in, in, in terms of health when I think of working out. I try to tell everybody, you know, don't be concerned with how you look. Be more concerned with your health. And if you're concerned with your health and you try to do things that way and, and, and be good and work out, you're automatically going to look good. If you eat right, you work out, you're going to look good automatically. But too many fo people focus on appearance nowadays. And, you know, it's one of the things when I, when I go out and I talk to somebody, I no matter – you know who they are or what they do everybody has something positive about them and you try to find that and it makes life a lot easier you know yeah you can pulling people apart if you find you know einstein said it best you know i'm not a genius i just know what works for me and everybody has something that works for them and if you want to be successful in life the best thing to do is find what you're good at love what you're what you're good at and you'll you'll be successful at whatever that is and i've been lucky enough to find that so so Turkish background, do you make a good Turkish tea or what? <laughs> yeah, well, I don't make tea too much. I drink a lot of coffee. Yeah. I'm a coffee kind of guy. But, uh, yeah, I like the food. The Middle Eastern food is really good. It's, uh, a, lot of, a lot of dishes my, my dad makes here and there that are really good. Certain types of vegetables, salads and meats and things like that. 
So I definitely got a, I think uh, the cultural taste in uh, in my background at a lot of the foods I like from the Middle East and, and so forth. My mom's uh, born here. She's uh, Norwegian background, so I'm American, but yeah. That's where I'm from so. You uh, so when you were a cop, were you like a, a, a Chicago downtown South Side cop, or were you you know in the burbs? Or I was I was in the burbs. Uh, I was on the street for you know like uh, four years, and then my last uh, four and a half years, I was a detective, which I did financial crimes and uh, I did all the confidence crimes like uh, check cases and scams that people would do, credit card fraud. Uh, I did the stuff that nobody liked to do. I just liked digging and searching and using the computer to try and you know find the bad guy. And uh, a lot of guys don't like that. They like to go out and beat the pavement and, and look around. For me, it was kind of fun to. It's much better to do your job over a computer than have to run all over the place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My wife, by the way, gave you another ten points back in your favor because you're an ex-cop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nita, you got some questions now? Uh, yeah. Um, first question from OBS DJ Toro, um, Mr. Turk. Uh, oh shit! Where did it go? Uh, whose idea was it to take off the mask? Uh, I think that was, see, that was already decided before they hired me, but I believe it might have been John Tobias's idea uh, to do that uh, exactly. They, they never really, like, said this is why we're doing it or um, whose idea it was, but I just know when I got in there, they uh, showed me the other guy that played Sub-Zero and what it was when it was about with this mask, and then they kind of just drew the uh, the line down my face with a, with a big marker, and... Uh, and that's kind of how it went, but um, and then they put the mask back on in mythology, so I didn't quite understand, uh, you know, what their reasons for, were for doing that. But um, well, I think in mythology you were playing the younger brother of Sub Zero. Was yeah. that the case? Well, it, th that's kind of the because it was like two Sub Zeros or some something like that. It was the Adventures of Sub Zero. So I think uh, it's been so long, but I think they went back into the. To the, to the mind or the character of it and created this, you know, other other part of Sub-Zero. So I, 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 they never really told me much when I went in there. I got another good story about the game. Quite honestly, uh, when, when I did the game, I never played it. I didn't know anything about it. When I was at one of the, the trade shows, I was at one of the, I think it was E3. It was in New Orleans. So uh, there was a kid... After I got done uh, signing, I was in costume and all, and he said, "Hey, man," he says, uh, "Why don't you, can I can I play you in the game?" And I said, "Yeah, sure." And I had never played the game before, so I I get the controls in my hand, and this kid character comes out. I come, you know, my guy comes out, and he beats me in like two seconds. Looks Damn. at me and says, "Hey, man," he goes, uh, "Come on, I know you you let me win there." He goes, "Just really try." <laughs> so I said, okay. So we did it again, and he beats me in like two seconds. He goes, no, seriously. He goes, go ahead and play me. I won't be mad if you beat me. I won't be hurt. I said, okay. So I did it again, and he beats me in like two seconds, and he goes, you can't really, you really can't play the game, can you? And I said, not really. And he goes, oh, you suck. I move on up, and they can't the game. Sit on hours. He goes, to give the game a bad name, don't even pick up that control. And I said, okay, I won't. <laughs> Kind of funny. Wow. Wait, did we just lose him? No, he see, your volume dropped. Hear me? Yeah. Hear me I see you're freezing up a bit. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna drop the call and reinitialize it, and hopefully it'll fix that. Okay. Right. You see me? Uh, it takes a second to load, then the other party can't see you. Yep, there we go. Perfect. You're better. <clears throat> All right, All right. There you go. All right. Next question from Shinox. Uh, do you still get recognized as Sub Zero today? Yeah. Um, you know, I think I was telling you earlier about that uh, mover that recognized me. People see me on. Uh, I remember a kid came up to me in the gym one day. I was working, and he said, uh, "Hey, man," he said, I, "This is gonna sound." St Everyone always says that. That's the opening line. This is gonna sound stupid, but are you Sub Zero? So I had people in the gym where I'm at. You know, people randomly recognize me, and um, I don't know. I just think uh, I haven't changed much in 
15 years since I've done it. So I, you know, I, I eat pretty good. I exercise, I stay healthy. And so I, I've been fortunate enough. I haven't really aged much, even though I, I'm, uh, I'm 50 years old now, but, uh, I feel pretty good. And other than my aches and pains from some injuries, but yeah, people still recognize me. So it's kind of cool. That's good. All right. Um, question from Shinox again. Um, when you, when you was asked to do the ninja's moves, did you tell them what character they, they were for, or did you do them separate? Did you, sh did you shoot them separately? Well, when I went in there, they had ideas for moves that they wanted to do, and then I would give them suggestions, but everything was done. I was separate from all the other characters, so I didn't interact with any other characters. The only ones I did were when I did mythologies, we had the acting sequences in the, in the middle of the game when you got to a certain level. And uh, those we were paired up like with Rich Divizio. We had blast shooting those, by the way. Was, Rich was a uh, he was uh, definitely a funny guy. And uh, Lee has some of the outtakes on there. You can see them on the YouTube. I think they put them up. But there's some funny stuff in there from from all of us. But uh, that was that was the only time I actually had an interaction with other actors was when we did those little scenes in the middle. But other than that, all the, all the moves and all the fighting and stuff were all just separate. They just kind of brought everything together and and uh and digitized it all right um question from zato 1984 what's your opinion about the actors who portrayed sub-zero in the mk1 in two movies uh i mean you know it's a lot of those guys are what you call form specialists they um they're really good at you know uh, combat forms you uh a lot of them i actually i did a commercial for mortal Kombat, the actual commercial that they wanted to use me for that, and they flew me out there for that, and I did uh, I did that. So I worked with one of the guys that actually was one of the mutant ninja turtles. So he was a form specialist, and they were the guys that did do all the flips and stuff like that. I was mm -hmm. just specifically uh, uh, a tournament fighter. I didn't do any like special moves or flips or uh, weapons or anything like that. These guys that do the movie are it's an art for them. I mean, they uh, they're really good at what they do. Uh, they get, they're almost like gymnasts, a lot of them. So mm -hmm. this guy was working with, and the, what was bizarre is, you know, none of them are really big guys. I mean, I, I'm, I'm five, uh, five, 11, about 195 pounds. I'm pretty solid. All these guys are like five foot six, five foot five, about 150 pounds. You can't move like that when you're, you know, 190 plus pounds. It just doesn't work that well. <laughs> so these, these smaller guys are great at what they do. They can fly around and it might be why a lot of times they didn't use a lot of us because I think I was one of the few guys that actually had a martial arts background. Rich does, Divizio, but I think they were looking more, uh, quite honestly. Kid, he did. That's the kind of forms I'm referring to, gymnastic type forms. You there? Yeah, I'm here. All right. Uh, no sound right now. They're saying. Let me see something. Check one, two. Go ahead, talk, Nate. Just talk. You there? Yep. Did, can I'm you here. guys hear now? Can you guys hear now? Check one, two. Sounds back. That's weird. If I unplug my uh, microphone. My wife, here we go once again. My wife wanted to hear your voice because <laughs> I got you coming through the headset. So um, I hate to do this to you. Can you repeat what you just said about the, because that actually cut out. Um, about the little guys doing their, uh, their, their trapeze acts as actors as compared to bigger guys. Yeah, no idea. Uh, a lot of the guys they use for the movies, what I'm guessing is, is they use them because they're more acrobatic type form specialists for martial arts. And that's kind of what the movie industry, you know, uses. They, they do all the, the wild rigging and all the uh, acrobatic type martial arts. And, and, and myself and I think Rich are the only other guys that really knew martial arts. But uh, we don't do that. You know, I was more of the tournament style fighting and uh, I didn't do any of the wild gymnastic type martial arts flips and things, so that's why they used, uh, I think, the guys that they did for the film. As I was saying, Jet Li and, you know, uh, I mentioned Taylor Lautner earlier. He, if you look on YouTube, it, that's the kind of videos 
uh, or the type of uh, style I'm referring to. Taylor Lautner was a like a forms champ when he was a kid. So uh, I was more into the actual hand-to-hand -hand stuff. So I didn't do any of the, uh, you know, flips and wild jump spinning kicks, you know. On a street, those don't really work. It was more a come and smash. Yeah, right. Hulk smash. <laughs> I had a select few. I, like My big idol when I was a kid is I love Chuck Norris. And, uh, you know, the kicks he used, and that's why I liked his movies a lot, they were more real. I mean, those are the types of stuff that you would use when you get in a fight, you know. Spinning back kick, you would use the side kick, a roundhouse. And, and even then, you wouldn't kick to the head unless like, someone was really phased. You would, you know, hit the body first and then go up once they start to get, you know, a little woozy. But, you know, you see in these movies, these guys doing all these wild flips and kicks that would never happen in a street fight. No. Yeah. Now, has anybody ever told you, I know you said you did commercials. Now, a lot of these younger guys are not going to remember it. Remember the old Robert Conrad, I dare you to knock this off my shoulder? Sure. Yeah. You could definitely do a remake of that and, and be convincingly <laughs> scary as, as much as he was. Yeah, it was. I used to love Robert Conrad. He just brought up a, a name from the past. Yeah, he was uh, always fun to watch, him and Steve McQueen. But, yeah, I, would, yeah, I mean, I would love to do something like that. It's... Uh, you know, I definitely have my niche in the acting community, what they call me for, because I have a build, too, so they always call me for, you know, meathead roles, so to speak. And, uh, you know, I mean, I work, and I don't have a problem with it. I, I wish I would, could get regular guy roles, but, like, when I did my role in Prison Break, I, I played a, a part in there. I, I just, you know, I kind of look a little like a linebacker, and I'm really not. It just film adds so much weight to you when you're on there. That the old adage that they adds 10 pounds is... I think totally true. And if you have any muscle on you, it's more like 20. So, you know, it's probably why they use a lot of the thinner, smaller guys like the Tom Cruises. I mean, he's a great actor too, but you know, he's also pretty small. If you met him in person, he's a little guy. So some of the bigger guys, like, you know, you look at Arnold on screen and the rock, they were pretty big guys. So, uh, you can't really use too many of them in, in regular guy roles. So you want a suit that can kind of fit onto everybody. So, you get stuck in those roles where they just call you for one thing and one thing only, which I've kind of gotten used to and I don't mind anymore. So, Do you know who uh, Henry Rollins is? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have you heard that one? Oh, man, I, I, I wish I had you know, a dollar for every time I heard that. I'm always, hey, man, you're Henry Rollins without the tattoos. <laughs> I like Henry Rollins. I think he's a rowdy dude, man. He's a pretty, pretty funny guy. He's, uh, I used to watch that show he had every now and then that, one uh, I think it was where he blew stuff up. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, he's a pretty cool guy. I mean, I, I, I people say that I don't. I'm not offended by it. I like I like him around. So, uh, Mr. Natus, you got some more questions there? Your mic is cutting out, Natus. We don't hear you, Natus. Yeah. Oh, there, there you, you go. go. Sorry Unmute about it. That. All right. Um... The male ninjas are from Strikey. The male ninjas are generally the best characters in UMK3, yet Shang Tsung is one of the worst characters. Was you told to perform Shang Tsung's moves differently, or was you having a lazy day when you did the recordings for Shang? <laughs> no, actually, they told me I didn't pick any of those moves. In fact, the the the, uh, the stance that I had wasn't my... None of that was my idea. They wanted them to be different. You realize, too, when we did those roles, you're kind of... You're kind of pigeonholed into what your costume could handle like when i did uh mythologies every time i did a spin kick or i did anything my mask would fly off the thing would twist on me they were not made to be form fitting they they were hard plastic they didn't fit well uh that shang soon costume every time i did anything the wig would flip around and hit me in the face so a lot of it seemed, <laughs> i mean it just seemed really stiff and uh it it kind of went that way just because of the outfit so I, every time i tried to do thing at full speed anything at full speed it just it didn't look right it came across real the, the, the wig would fly in my face the, the arm sleeve would come shooting off so nothing really fit well so you kind of had to you know adopt the 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 character and the moves to what the costume would allow you to do so yeah he's whoever asked that question is absolutely right it was one of those outfits that didn't go well with her filming so when you uh, when you saw the uh, when you first saw the fatalities, uh, what was your initial reaction? Uh, I mean, I, 
he showed me beforehand before I did any of the filming, and I thought I, th I was like, wow, this is pretty bizarre how they can do this. I got a funny. Uh, yeah, I was when I was a policeman. I was also they wanted me to do some of the dare programs, and uh, I know it's kind of off subject, but um, I remember I was sitting in an auditorium full of kids. It was probably 300 kids in the auditorium, and one of the, the the head police officer, the head dare officer, was talking to the kids, and he said. Uh, um, hey, uh, has anybody ever seen the game Mortal Kombat? And all the kids raised their hand, and he says, well, that's Sub-Zero sitting in the back. Well, I ended up getting swarmed by all these kids and signing all these autographs. <laughs> After I got back to the to the police station, uh, they actually, the chief got flooded with calls from parents that were mad because how could some a police department promote such a violent game? So oh, here, shit. on one hand, he was so happy that all these kids were drawn to me. He was like, okay, this is great. This guy can be a good role model. And then on, on the other hand, all these parents called and were saying, my gosh, it's such a violent game. How could you promote that? Even one of your officers was in it. So it's, it was kind of a, one of those things when you say uh, uh, the question you asked me about. Uh, the fatalities. Fatalities, yeah. I think the fatalities is a lot of times what made that game different because it was so brutal. It was one of the first games to really come out with that, you know, ripping a, a skeleton and a spine out of your character and then holding it up and the blood dripping off. I mean, you know, that you've never you never saw that before. So a lot of these parents, when they'd see their kids playing that game, were freaked out, didn't want to play in it. And so it, it kind of was a very controversial game when a lot of that happened. So, yeah, yeah, it's unfortunate. yeah I got to say, when I worked on the home versions of the game, um, we used to get calls from these, these anti-violent groups, and they were basically threatening to kill us. And I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> you're complaining about a game, and now you're calling up our company, and you're threatening to kill us. Right, right, right. Makes a lot of sense, right? All right, Mr. Natus. Um, question from Strikey again. What color was the male ninja costumes when you did the recordings for Scorpion, Ermac, Reptile, etc.? I haven't seen any photos or videos. Well, the... Um <clears throat> the one I did for, when I did uh, Shang Tsung, and I did uh, Scorpion and uh, Sub-Zero, those characters is what you see. They were the colors that they were. But what they did is they ended up taking a lot of uh, Sub-Zero, and that's how they morphed to Ermac, Smoke, and, and all the other characters. So a lot of them were just knockoffs of Sub-Zero. And uh, that's why you really don't know what colors they were. You know, it was behind a green screen, so you can do whatever you want to the background and the actual character. So uh, that's kind of why they used that. So when you see, you know, Scorpion, I was, you know, it was yellow. When you see uh, Sub Zero, it was blue. When you see Shang Tsung, I had those goofy, uh, you know, yellow pants. Those, on. those nut huggies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with that with that goofy thing over my shoulder, going right up my rear end. That was not fun. So. All right. Uh, another question from Strikey: Has anyone, has anyone who's ever recognized you as Sub Zero in real life brought up a cheesy ice pun in the middle of a conversation with you? Uh, no. Like you mean brought up a like a fatality thing or like when they iced me when I ice people or? I don't know. He just says cheesy ice pun. Like I guess what the, what he's trying to say is like you know you meet somebody and you know he he says oh I I thought it would be a cold day in hell before I would meet the real Sub Zero. Oh no 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 no! You know what I, I get a lot of people that would say oh you're Sub Zero and then they would do the freeze move and they would you know shoot me with ice. <laughs> or here you go. Uh, I did the voices for a lot of it too. Like I went into the studio and I did like when you hear finish him. Yeah, you know I I was the voice for that. So I did some of the voiceover on a lot of it too. See, Toro and somebody else said, ice to meet you. I guess that's what they're trying to... He knew something was going to be said like that. So, it's actually a pretty good one. Yeah. All right. Uh, next question from Beef Supreme. Uh, do, you enjoy the experiencing, do you enjoy the experience shooting MK? And were there lots of pranks going on? Uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Especially like... Um, you know, when we did the filming where it was just us in the studio doing the moves, it was kind of long days. Like, I remember working – one day I was there 14 hours and just, you know, kicking and punching and, you know, and then they would have uh, – actually, in the running scenes, I'm on a treadmill. So I'm not even really running. I'm just on a treadmill. But we, there really wasn't, you know, much joking. There was here and there, like, you know, with, you know, costume malfunctions or wardrobe malfunctions, if you want to say. But the, the fun stuff was when I was did mythologies with Rich and – 
uh, Leah and and the other characters. So that was that was good because you know we got to meet each other, interact, and uh, like I said, uh, you could see some of the outtakes on YouTube with like myself and Rich and Leah. Oh, I, I saw that uh, yesterday. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> During the filming, what would you say is your fondest memory of doing the MK games? Uh, I, I mean, some of the trade shows I went to were a lot of fun, you know? Like, I met Wayne Gretzky at one of them. He was next to me. We were both kind of signing autographs together, and uh, it was kind of cool. You know, I had kids lining up for me as much as Wayne Gretzky, so it was pretty uh, pretty fun to see. Um, you know, I, I, I just... I'm just real happy I did the game. I mean, it's been such of a cult following now. It's kind of become a cult game, and and it's uh, it's just great to be a part of it. And you know, one memory uh, that sticks out, I really can't say uh, any of them. It was just the whole. It, it was the experience of it all that is is in my mind. I, I just uh, had a lot, met a lot of good people. I had a lot of fun doing it, and uh, made some pretty good money. <laughs> and uh, you know, I I'd love to do it again. And uh, and hopefully the, they start going more towards, you know, using people again instead of digitizing. I know that computer animation is getting even better and better, but, you know, even when you look at some of the movies now, you, you still know it's not a real person, and it's just not the same as when you see, it, you know, the, like I said, the Gary Oldmans and Christopher Walkins, you know, all these guys that are, are great actors, and you can just see what's going on in their mind and in their eyes. So you can't really see that with a digitized image, you know. You get, yeah basically an act and a, you know someone acting i mean it's funny because now the way the technology is how you were saying that you know you were the only guy that could do you know x amount of martial art moves right now the way the technology is they can film you strip your frame right off of it store right. that animation tie it to some guy say 450 pounds who may not be able to do a jump kick and now by tying that animation that body frame will do that jump kick so it, it kind of, you know, it, it's kind of like that going from real to digital video. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, you know, actually digitizing characters now is a, uh, I guess it's an ancient craft now that, you know, it's, it's easier for them now to do it that way rather than right. film 100 people coming in. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I don't know about you, when I watch a movie and... Uh, like we're doing now, we're doing the, kind of the backstory on all this, and you're you're hearing my uh, my stories on what happened and when I was filming, and you, you don't you don't get any of that when you're when you're using all these digitized characters. You know, I, when I watch a movie, and you know, like let's say it's got you know Daniel Craig in there, and he's doing uh, you know the, one of the Bond films, I like to hear the fact that he did this stunt or he did you know this scene, and he's a, a really a, a good fighter or whatever. You don't get any of that backstory with if any of the digitized characters, you know. So in a lot of the movies, it's 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 cool when you hear an actor, you know, was able to do all the fight scenes and he's really good at this or that. But you know, there there's a story that goes along with a real person, but you don't you don't have any of that with digitized stuff. So and and, and quite honestly, you know, like when I look at the movies, The Born Identity and The Born Supremacy, you know. Matt Damon to me isn't a an action guy or an action fighter, but the way they cut that film and the fact that you know Matt he's Matt Damon he's a good actor, you could put all that stuff together with real people and still make it look you know very believable and and very very good. Oh yeah, I believe they could have took Ben Stiller and put him in there, and he yeah. would have looked great in the movie. Right, right. So the way they did that film and the way they cut it, that guy uh, was it was a great idea and how they did it, just real fast, quick cuts and clips and. You know, you could you could do that with just about anybody nowadays. But when you you know, you you just you just don't see any movies like Rambo anymore. Or, you know, the real visceral kind of movies that you know are, you know, it's a real person and you, and it's believable stuff. You know, I mean, some of the stuff in Rambo obviously isn't. You know, but it's just it's just kind of cool to see a real person. And I'm I'm just really kind of against the whole digitizing the way the industry is going. I think it's uh. It's kind of a cop out in a way. What I think that it fits well for kids, but it's a lot of the studios want to make more money so they can get rid of actors and they can, you know, make it with these uh, digitized characters. It's more money in their pocket, so that's what they're trying to force the public into going to is all this digitized stuff. I mean, yeah, it's only what twenty five dollars a ticket now for a movie. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm surprised they can't say they're not making enough. Right. Yep. 
Like five here in, in Chicago, so. Natus. Uh, question for me. Can you take us back in time when you, James, and Brett the Hitman Hart were out of bar drinking? <laughs> he doesn't drink. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I, well, I had my days when I did, but I, I you don't drink at all anymore. And back when I did the game, I didn't, uh, I didn't drink much at all then either. So we, uh, you know, it uh, it was it was fun. You know, you go out and especially being with him, you know, everybody recognizes him, especially in the pro wrestling world. And uh, you know, I just uh, we didn't do anything really crazy. So. No. It wasn't, one. No, uh, you know it's funny because like like you say that I'm I I was saying the same thing. I'm going, you know, here I am. I'm a nobody, just a game player, and I'm hanging out with Sub Zero, Brett, you know, and, and Brett Hart in the, in the French Quarter. Going, you know, I, I'm basically being tagged with two stars, so everybody's going to notice me now. But you know <laughs> what? In the French Quarter, I think he's the only one that got noticed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's a. Uh... The whole pro wrestling things, you know, I mean, that thing's exploded. Uh, I mean, it was big when I was a kid. I remember when I was younger, it was Dick the Bruiser. So I don't know if probably a lot of kids out there don't know that name, but I'm sure you do, Jim. But. Yeah, I do. Actually, we got a guy that's uh, a big, big MK3 player, uh, a, a guy by the name of Shock. He, uh, he's actually a pro wrestler on the side, too. Oh, okay. And he does, oh. and he's more old school like that, you know, as compared to getting thrown off a two hundred foot rafter. He's more about the actual art of wrestling, not entertaining. Right, right, right. Yeah, some of those guys come from a wrestling back background, like you know, you got uh, Brock Lesnar. He was an actual wrestler, so a lot of them are, are very good athletes. And listen, to do what those guys do, you got to be have some athletic ability. I mean jumping and doing flips and the abuse those guys take on their body people may say it's fake but i'll tell you man those guys go through a lot <laughs> you know it's funny uh one of the shows that i did because one of the other titles we used to do all the wrestling games when it was still wwf and uh at the time it was and i know natus you're gonna know their names uh mr ass what's his name <laughs> uh billy gunn billy gunn billy and bart gunn were the cowboy, they were going through their cowboy shtick. Right. And uh, we were at the Desert Inn in Vegas, and they, you know, they came to the party. And, you know, every kid that came in, the first thing they would say to him, you know, this is fake, right? You know, this is fake, right? And these guys would genuinely get mad. Yeah, I don't blame them. You man. know, because they're like, look, dude, you know, he's sitting there going, look, I'm 6'7", you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 295 pounds. And I'm throwing this guy 12 feet across the ring or getting thrown 12 feet across the ring. Right. And at the end of the day, we're not hurting each other. But right. don't say it's fake, you yeah. know. There's and, no and, extra oh, padding. Right. And, you know, you you look at that. What, I don't know if you remember Mankind, but that guy, that none of that was fake. When him getting head, hit in the head with those chairs and, you know, all the cuts and scrapes and everything he had, that guy took some abuse. He's another he, one. He, uh, lives, he lives by me, too. Yeah, he all he does. Yeah, he's out on Long Island with me. Uh, yeah, the stuff he does that was, you know, I'm, I mean, I'll, I'll never forget. I'll never forget it as long as I live. And watching wrestling for forty years, when the Undertaker threw him through the cage. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And I'm going, look, call it thirteen feet, call it twenty feet, call it sixty feet, whatever the footage was, I mean, it wasn't a two foot drop. Right, right, right. And to have him get slammed down like that, and you knew. Pardon my French. You knew that fucked him up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, and he still kept going. And then yeah. on top of that, getting thrown onto tacks, you right. know, and hitting barbed wire and lit on fire. Right, right. I mean, he's above and beyond the norm as far as a wrestler goes. Right, right. Man, yeah. I tell you, I had a couple friends in L.A. without using any names. They big, big dudes, and they they uh, they went out to the pro wrestling school out there, and they. They dropped out. They said, I can't do this. This is crazy. Every one of them was, you know, getting hurt and, uh, you know, beat up pretty good. So, you know, it's uh, it's definitely, you know, people need to respect a little more what those guys do because they go through a lot, man. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they don't get much. No. No. Nope. You know, I was working uh, at Madison Square, uh, Madison Square Garden for a couple of years. So, I mean, I would watch them all practice before. And just watching them practice... Mm -hmm. You know, you're sitting there and you're going, you're not getting paid good for this. You know, it might be one of those undercard scrubby guys that are just coming out to get his ass whooped for 10 minutes. Yeah. But he's not getting tossed around by the guy he's moving a match with. He's right. basically the beat-up doll for all the superstars for the right. day. For, right. you know, right. for, for maybe five, six hundred bucks, you know, plus pay your own travel. 
Right, right. You know, in hopes that you become a somebody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, it's, uh, yeah, it's tough, definitely a rough living, business. Man, if you're one of the underlings, so. Natus. All right. Um, question from Shinox. If you could freeze anyone in the world and leave them frozen forever, who would it be and why? I know who he wants, but I'm not saying nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I read your Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me see. Who would I freeze and why? That's a good question. I'd probably say uh, anyone in his in history. Who would I freeze and why? Well, who, do they have to be alive or dead? That doesn't matter. You can even make them dead if you want. You can give them a head spine <laughs> fatality. Uh, I'd have to say, uh, hmm, man. Michael Moore. <laughs> I'm I'm with you on that. You know what? You rip, you rip his head and spine out. I'll rip his legs off. Yeah. All right. Yeah, he's, he's the one. And after he's frozen, I take a take a hammer to him and shatter him into a million pieces. <laughs> all right. Next question from K7. In the original MK3, Sub Zero only had the ice shower and no straight freeze. They changed this in the later ver revisions. Did they bring John back in to record the animation, or was it unused in the original build? Uh, they didn't bring me uh, back to do that. No, um, a lot of that stuff they can change in the, in the filming when they do it. They can, um, you know, manipulate it and, and turn it around. And you know, a lot of that stuff I'm flipped the other way. Actually, like you might be seeing me, it looks like I'm I'm doing a movement one way, but they can literally flip it and turn you the other way. So, um, if I'm understanding the question right, they 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 didn't uh, change the way I. I did it at all, at all, I think, so. Okay. Um, from Shinox, did you enjoy filming the cutscenes in MK Mythologies? And are there any cool stories you remember from that time period? From from which one? Myth from, mythologies? Yeah. Uh, yeah, just uh, filming with Mythologies, I remember it was a set of stairs I had to walk up, and I was, like, looking down over the edge... And uh, I remember when I would look, I would have to walk up and, and get the other character would come up at the top of the stairs. And a couple times I almost just slipped off this. I did actually slip on the, if you look in the outtakes, they were kind of narrow stairs. And every my, I had these goofy shoes on that, you know, were part of the costume. And they were really kind of hard to, to judge sometime when you put your foot up there. They slipped real easy. My feet would turn in them. So I had a, a little bit of a hard time going up some of those stairs. Uh, Rich DeVizio had that costume on with all those spikes hanging out of it. So I remember one time when he was turning, we were turning around in a circle and they had the camera going around us. Uh, I kept getting hit with one of his spikes. And then his spikes, he kept running into the camera. So they, they kind of started to grow their own little life of their own, all these little little uh, uh, spikes coming out of his costume. So, uh, And then also, too, is... Uh, <laughs> A few of the scenes, Leo was having trouble with her lines and was messing them up, and, and she kept messing them up. And then finally, when she got her line right, I messed up my line. So it was just a lot of fun, you know. Everybody just working together, and you know, it's uh, all of us. I think it was our first time doing anything with acting where we had to read lines. So you could, you could probably tell some uh, somewhat that we were pretty much amateurs at what we were doing as far as the acting was concerned. But you know, it's uh, it was it was a great time, man. A lot of good memories with with those people. Uh, Rich is, I think Rich is doing a little bit of acting still. He was in, uh, he was in a Dark Knight too. He had a little little part in there, and uh, that was the last time I actually ran into him. But as far as uh, you know, like I said, I talked to him on the internet here and there. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that was the only you know the things that I remember most were the little goofy little outtakes here and there. Okay. All right. Question from Shinox again. Did you ever think that MK would last this long? and have such an impact on the gaming world. Not at all. In fact, I remember when I did it, you know, I'm, I didn't even think about it. You know, I said, okay, there's a gig, it's a video game, I've never even heard of it. and You know, uh, so I didn't even think anything of it. I think I, I realized the magnitude of it was when I went into that arcade and all those kids swarmed me and, uh, you know, I was instant like, I, it was what was weird about that moment was is I went from thinking that this was really nothing 
to going, wow, what did I get myself into? Because these kids treated me like I was some big celebrity. And, you know, here I am just, a, you know, a cop, you know, on a date with some girl. And I decided to stop in a movie arcade or a, a video game arcade. And, and, and that was, the, I think, the defining moment when I realized that this is a lot bigger than I realized. And then when I went back and I told them, you know, the next day, they said, oh, I don't think you realize what you got into. This game is like the most popular game in the world. And they started telling me more and more about the game. And so it just kind of was really a, a defining moment for me in that video arcade. And then, you know, too, when I got back to the, you know, when I was on the police department, those kids swore me there. And even now, I'm just, I'm amazed at all the people that contact me all over the world just to ask me questions and friend me on Facebook. And it's uh, really something I, I feel really, you know, happy to be a part of. And, you know, life's short and uh, it's, it's, you get the best out of this life, you know, it's, it's, you know, we're here one day and we could be gone the next. And, it's 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 easy to make enemies. It's hard to make friends, and it's it's fun when you make friends. So mm -hmm. I, I want to have people out there liking me. I don't want to have people out there, you know, disliking me. So, like I said, you know, everybody out there has something they're good at, and you know, has something that everybody should be interested in in knowing about them. And we should never really judge people for how they look or what they do for a living or anything like that. You know, being a cop, it was funny. Some of the most interesting people I met were. You know, people that were really just, you know, down and out and, you know, had bad luck and, you know, made bad decisions in their life. But, you know, when you sat there in the booking room with them and I would talk to them and, and they were away from the element and the crime was over with and they would reflect on everything. They were just people like I was and they made bad decisions. And, you know, as, as much as you want to say, you know, this I would never associate with that person. You know, I, f I feel bad for some of them, just the lives they had and how they were brought up or you know, what their circumstances are you know, dealt in life. And uh, I would trust some of these guys a lot more than I would trust some of my other, you know, people I knew growing up that were supposedly, you know, the successful ones. And uh, I think that job taught me a lot about just people in general and, you know, how, how people should be treated and and uh, the way you need to look at life. It's, uh, it's short. You just don't know when it's going to be taken away and make the best of every day and live in the moment. Don't future try to take in what's around you okay let All me right. let, let me ask you this since since you are an ex-cop did they ever approach you to be striker in the game at all no because i think they filmed before they did did mike sub-zero part so uh he was already uh cast and uh they didn't ask me to do that role so um yeah that was that was i think what it was with him I forget one of the other roles they were going to recast and they were considering me for it, but I think at that point they had used me for like eight characters and it was just going to be kind of overkill, so they wanted somebody new. I can't remember which one that was, but... Jade? Katana? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I lost you again. You hear me? Yeah, I hear you now. Okay, I had to I muted it for a second. All right, um, next question from Zach MK. What was going through your mind when you first saw the costume you had to wear for Shanks on an MK3? I just remember it up and it... Wait, repeat, we can't hear you. Your mic is cut now. Yeah, let me drop it again quick and uh, bring you back in. Technology sucks. Uh, Mike keeps cutting out. Okay. Okay. Better? Yeah. Okay. All right. You want me to repeat the question? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, from Zach MK, what was going through your mind when you first saw the costume that you wore for Shang Tsung and MK3? Oh, I just... I was not happy with it. I just didn't like it. I just felt weird in it, especially the the thing they had going over my shoulders and up my private parts, so to speak. But uh, <laughs> it wasn't fun to film in. It did not look look right. And then my, my I didn't even have a actually I didn't even have a, a a fake beard or mustache. It was marker drawn on my face. Oh, so it oh was shit! <laughs> one of those uh, makeup markers. It's really kind of kind of like a glossy kind of clay. And they would just draw it on, so it wasn't even really a, a real beard. It was just 
it just, you know, when I saw it, it just kind of, to me, it looked kind of cheesy. And I said, man, uh, all right, if this is what you want me to wear. So, um, yeah, it was definitely an interesting outfit, as I said earlier. You had that Alice Cooper look. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I did. All right. Question from uh, Luke from Total MK. Um, did John keep any of the props from working on the MK games? And did he have fun in the Dark Knight movie? Yeah, I do have, um, I actually have my costume from MK3. Uh, after one of the trade shows, I uh, I asked him if I could keep it, and I did, so it was good memorabilia. And that's another thing that's funny is I um, I noticed that they had this little, let me see if I can find it. i got it right here. One of my clients found out he didn't know I was Sub-Zero, and I told him, he goes, you got to kid me. And uh, there's a little... A little doll they made after me now, so. It's kind of <laughs> oh, cool. nice. Yeah, I don't. I don't have any of the memorabilia from the, from the game. Like, I didn't even get any of that stuff. I didn't. Wasn't given any, and so I kind of wanted the outfit or the costume just as something to remember it by. I do have a picture that I took in it that I I would email the people and you know say hi. They wanted a picture, or whatever. So I I took a picture in the outfit and and uh, I think that's what I'll use as my. Uh, my Facebook picture when I open up the Sub Zero page for that. Okay. All right. Next question uh, from Shinox: How would you like to be remembered for your contributions to Mortal Kombat? Uh, I just uh, know that I I I put a hundred percent into the game when I did it. Um, I want to remember it as um, you know a character that you know people wanted to see live on and and like to play and. Uh, I had some good ideas from some other moves and fatalities that, you know, I'd like to do. And, you know, just uh, one of the, I guess one of the characters more that people like to like to engage and like to play. I, I know that it was the most popular character because that's why they kind of broke off into the mythologies part of it. That is, that's what they were, they told me. They said that, you know, Sub-Zero ended up being the most popular character, especially the unmasked one. And they, uh, they broke off into mythologies and then, uh, and so forth. So, yeah, just remembered as, you know, one of the defining characters of Mortal Kombat. Okay. All right. Uh, next question from OBS Homeboy Tyson. John, can you flex for us, please? <laughs> <laughs> can you see it? <laughs> there you go. That's for Tyson. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, question from Shinox. Uh did you get the? Oh wait. Uh, oh, all right. We kind of asked this question already here. Sorry, Shinox. This question was asked already. Um, from OBS Guido, John. Since you're in the industries, do you know of any post-production companies in Chicago? Post-production companies? Yes. Um. Yeah, I think there's uh, one called Zucato. That's uh, a company here in Chicago. Uh. Yeah, there, there, there's several of them. I really don't get involved with any, a lot of the post-production companies. They, uh, some of them I did when I did Prison Break. I had to go and uh, some of my uh, voice didn't come over on some of the the, the scenes that we did. Um, I think if that's what you're referring to, or the, the the people that you know do the re-edits and the voiceover and things like that. So yeah, just a couple of them. I don't know too many of them. Okay. Uh... Question from B, B, Brooklyn, Yina? I don't know what the fuck his name is. All right. Uh, his question is, what is one of the favorite moments working with John Tobias and Ed Boone, and are you still in contact with them? Uh, you know, um, I don't talk to either one of them. You know, they're pretty busy guys. I kind of have my own my own life here, and, uh, um, you know, you know, it was a lot of business relationship with them. You know, they're pretty, pretty uh, busy guys. I mean, especially with this game when this game was really popular back in the day. It's was they were they didn't have a minute to themselves. They were working fourteen. You know, I was there fourteen hours on certain days, and then they would have to stay after even more to make sure they you know downloaded all the images and saved everything, and then they would talk about it. So, as far as a social life, man, those guys work a lot. I know Ed Boone works a lot. John Tobias does. And now John started his own company a while back, and I'm sure, you know, that's got him running like crazy. Well, he's also, because uh, he's actually going to be coming on in the next couple of weeks. He, uh, 
He's working with Zynga, the guys who do all those Facebook games, Farmville and all that. He's, he's He just started working with them now. So, I mean, yeah, he's, uh, I don't know if he's, I think he's still staying in Chicago, though. I don't think he's leaving the Chicago area. I think he's going to work. Oh, no, he's, yeah, he's still here. He's not uh, leaving Chicago, neither is Ed. Ed. Ed's still with Midway, I think. Well, Midway, 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 Midway went f- gone. They went, they went bankrupt. Yeah, and basically well, he's with Williams. It's called Williams, then, right? And, or that, and, and that went bankrupt as well. Now it's called NRS, Nether Realm Studio. Yeah, that's it. He's with that because that's actually the last time I emailed them. It yeah. was at Nether Realm, right? And they got bought out by Warner Brothers. So now and Warner Brothers owns them. Right, and that's who's doing uh, the Mortal Kombat movie, the new one coming out. Exactly. Right. See how they tie everything in together. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Next question. Oh, man. Someone had to ask this question. How uh, bad is it? All right. Here we go. I'm going to ask it anyway. Uh, from Diz88, John Turk, do you like fish sticks, bro? Do, do, do I like what? Fish sticks. Fish sticks? <laughs> I, I love fish sticks, and I, I don't eat them now, but, I mean, back in the day, uh, Long John Silver had pretty good fish sticks. Is there an underlying joke here on this? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Just end it, just end it there. No, uh, I, don't, just, I, no I don't like fish sticks. Uh, I, 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 I guess it just kind of yeah. sailed right over my head. <laughs> but everybody in the room right now is laughing their ass off, so... <laughs> um, we got a guy, one of the top players. He asked it to everybody. That South Park uh, cartoon. There was yeah. an there was an episode of it where uh, basically the joke was he was asking that I think was it the singer R. Kelly or who was the singer they were uh, messing with in that? I don't remember. It was one of these R and B singers who. Uh, oh, it was Con- uh, Kanye West. Yeah, and. Uh, he asked him if he liked fish sticks, and of course he says, yeah. And he says, do you like fish sticks in your mouth? And he goes, "What?" He goes, yeah, of course. He goes, so what? You're a gay fish. And it was like this stupid little joke, but we got the top player who asks everybody that. Oh, man. So every guest I've pretty much had, they've asked, do you like fish sticks? <laughs> I'm glad you had me end it where I did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um... Next question um, from uh, this same person. Again. His name is Jacob. Um, what was the scariest moment in your acting or police career? Uh, police career, obviously, overacting. There, I don't really have any scary situations in acting. You know, it's uh, everything staged. It's you know, you know, I, I I do stunts, but I did mostly fighting stunts. I didn't do any like high falls. I did one in prison break, but it wasn't really that high. It was only a couple stories, and I fell into a big pad. But police work, you know, I had stuff. I had. Uh, I remember we were we got a call one night where these uh, this this house had just had a home invasion, and uh, it was uh, an Asian gang had broken into this house and uh, you know gagged and bound these people at gunpoint, and then you know burglarized their house and uh, took off in their car and. Right when they gave the description of the car, I was sitting in a parking lot, and the car was literally right across the street from me. And I said, "Well, that's the guys," you know. So I called out. A couple guys came with us, you know, showed up on the scene, and we went over there, and they took off into the, a wooded area with uh, with guns. So the scary part was walking into the forest, not knowing who was hiding where, and, and pitch, you know, pitch black, whether or not you're going to get plugged in the back or shot. And uh, it kind of had a funny ending, though, because my one friend, he was a pretty big character on the police department. We were going through with our guns out looking for him, and he, he started calling out, I see you, come on out, come on out, I see you, I see you over there. And all of them came out from behind this berm with their hands up and dropped their gun. And I just I looked at him when we were finished, and I said, Mark, how did you see those guys? I couldn't see a thing. He said, I didn't, I was bluffing. <laughs> so these guys just came out of nowhere thinking we had seen them, and we didn't. So, I mean, that was... A scary situation because uh, you know it's it's one thing when you're you know in a shootout, but it's another thing when the suspense of it is an unknown and you're in that moment for a long time, not knowing when it's going to come or if it's going to come and if you're going to do it, if it's going to be over with in a flash and get shot in the back of the head and in the back, or you're going to get shot in the spine and be paralyzed. All these thoughts go through your mind, and it's not like it's cut off where you get in a fight with somebody and you're 
mixing it up and you're rolling around with them trying to get a gun with you, you're not thinking in that moment. You're going on instinct. But when you're walking through a, an area, like I couldn't imagine being a soldier in Vietnam, you're walking through the jungle not knowing who's going to pop out and blast you at any minute. And I had a little feel of that when, when we did that, that walk in the forest looking for these guys. So I got to say that that was, and it wasn't more specifically because, you know, nothing really ended up happening, but it was just that that moment where you, you, you don't know it last 10 or 15 minutes. So, you know, here's these guys in Vietnam, which I respect all veterans. I mean, I think uh, our military is, you know, we as people, we as Americans, we owe everything to those guys. I'm seeing these guys coming home from Iraq with missing arms and legs, man, my heart just goes out to them. It's, you know, they've made the ultimate sacrifice, you know, other than God. But, you know, I'm, uh, I'm a big believer in our military, man. Those guys, uh, God bless them all. Oh, yeah, definitely. All right. Uh, question from Luke at Total MK. When working on the MK games, did you get much direction from the MK team leads, Ed Boone and John Tobias, or was it someone else? No, it was from Ed Boone and John Tobias. They, they gave most of the direction. There was a couple other guys on there that were um, uh, computer guys, and they, I, I think they would give input as far as, well, I don't think that'll fit in the screen or... A lot of times they would they would get technical advice from some other guy that had a specialty in some other area, and uh, but you know Ed and and then John pretty much were the you know the minds behind that game you know even the move uh, they they came up with you know ninety nine percent of all those it was uh, you know idea and uh, and uh, their their thoughts and, and did you uh. Did you come up? I mean, I mean, everybody in the moment says, "Hey, this would be a great idea." Did you come up with anything like some kind of fatality stuff where you were like, "Hey, dude, you know, I want to rip the guy's head off, and I want to kick him in the face, and I want to throw him in the ground," and they were just like, "Dude, like, we can't do all that." Or I mean, pretty much were they locked in what they said? Yeah, there were some things I tried to come up with that just wouldn't work good on camera because they required. First of all, in order to do it, you, you couldn't do slow mo with it. It had to be a move that was done fast because. A lot of some of the moves that you would do, some of the spin kicks in that, they relied on gravity. And in order to do it, you would have to, you know, move really quick. And uh, when I would do it, they just said, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work good with the film because it was kind of choppy. So, unfortunately, some of the uh, the moves that you would want to do didn't work real well on camera. Even nowadays, you know, there's certain things you can and can't do on camera that just don't come across well. But I think with a lot of the, some of the moves, not a lot of them, but some of them, um, I didn't come up with them, but I would add little twists to them to say, hey, you know what, I think it would look a little better this way. And you'd be like, oh, yeah, that, that looks good. Do it that way, you know. So it, it wasn't really one move I came up with or one idea. I kind of just, you know, I made one idea or, you know, several ideas look a little better than what they originally were. All right. I'm going uh, to give you a break for a few minutes. I'm going to run a couple of commercials. Um, come back. Are you tired yet? I'm, I, I, I going to be up at 5 in the morning, so I, I'm going to have to. Unfortunately, so, call it in a little so bit. What, so, yeah, let me let me run these commercials, come back, and then uh, say your goodbyes, promote your stuff a little bit more. You know, especially guys, you know, I mean, anybody that's in the Chicago area, I mean, if you want to get a good workout, I mean, <laughs> who better to get a workout from, from Sub-Zero, man? He knows what he's talking about. All right, let me, uh, let me run these commercials, and I'll come back in two secs. Okay, sounds good. My tag is KFrog, and I'm a competitive gamer. Mortal Kombat's my game, mainly because I'm terrible at Japanese fighting games, but I still go to pretty much all the fighting game tournaments in Toronto, and I've competed at some of North America's largest major fighting game tournaments as well, like Evolution in Las Vegas and some of the Major League Gaming tournaments. I've held casual gaming sessions every month at my place to help local players level up and train for the past year, and I sometimes house gamers when they come from out of town for a tournament. The long and the short of it is, I'm very familiar with and very connected to the fighting game community. I've always been especially struck by the level of analysis and effort that some players put into mastering their games and with everything that goes on inside and outside of tournaments. I'm pretty sure the majority of people have absolutely no idea how far competitive gamers go to become top players in their games and about the level of devotion and skill that's involved in the process. So I decided to do this project. The goal? Present the range of experiences by talking to both casual and competitive fighting game players as well as sharing my own experiences. 
In order to do this properly, I need to get to New York City and California to conduct some key interviews with a few of North America's top fighting game players. I'll then be providing exclusive in-depth coverage of one of Canada's largest major fighting game tournaments, T13, which many of these players will be attending. So I invite you to join me as I attempt to define the premise of the game. That's the one big That was crazy. That was crazy. My skills are Okay, we're back with uh, John Turk, guys. Um, I got a couple more questions for you, and then we're going to let you go. Um, Natish, you got a couple more? Okay. Um, from Jacob again. John, what are your future projects? Have you been approached for a cameo appearance in the new MK movie? Yeah, no. Uh, like it, uh, I mentioned before, I would love to have some even, even a small cameo in there just to... I think it would be really good too, just for the movie in general, just for the old gamers and and people that you know. And hey, man, that's that's the real Sub Zero right there. So uh, no one's approached me. I actually contacted. Uh, I sent Ed Boone an email and asked him if he uh, has heard anything. I haven't heard back from him on that yet, but you know, I have a, a pretty decent acting background now. So there's, you know, it's not like they would be getting an amateur in there. It's uh, I've got a good resume now, and I've done several films and. Um, and, you know, some pretty good work. I've been in some plays, so I, I would love to have some kind of part in one of those, you know, bigger budget films. But uh, I think it's just, you know, they got their people they use, and you know, we're just uh, an afterthought when it comes to a lot of that stuff. Plus, you know, money's involved, and you know, a lot of times there's nepotism. You know, that's in all, every industry. So I understand it, you know. But uh, hey, man, push for me. No, guys, my wife's not burning down the kitchen. Um, maybe we can get in contact with uh, and what are you doing? They can give it free movies here. Yeah, if they want to see movies like that, they gotta pay. <laughs> um, what was that, uh, Natus? Uh, James, maybe we maybe we could swing a message over to uh, Kevin. Uh, see, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, because I mean, I was gonna, I was just about to ask you before I was rudely interrupted with my wife in a nightgown. Um, <laughs> a, a flannel jammies, right? Oh, uh, I wish. Um, basically, uh, have you seen or heard about the Mortal Kombat Legacy, which is the YouTube movies that are up there? You might not have heard about them. They kind of, kind of went under the radar. Can somebody beside, well, Natish, you can barely pronounce ask, but what's the guy's name? John what? It's Kevin Takaniri Kev yeah. Taka or Taka something. Touching Jujian, I think he's the the director yes. on it, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. He did a, He did one 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 uh, one series already. He's starting another series. I mean, he kind of put in he put in Sub Zero, but he made him Asian. You know, I mean, right, right. because he's a ninja. But uh, you know, I mean, definitely. I mean, they got Michael Jai White as Jax. Right, you know, right. but beyond that, they're not putting in. You know, besides Michael, I don't think there was there anybody in there that was a big name. Uh, the girl from Star Trek, uh, Jerry Reiner, or oh, something like that. So I guess he's got some money to spend. He's got, yeah. You know, yeah, but he's doing a second season for the series, and then he's gonna do the movie afterwards. Yes. So he's still he's still doing another series. So I mean, you know, everybody out there in the uh, the MK universe, get in contact, email Jerry and I mean Jerry, uh, Kevin, Kevin, and basically say you know how. 
much better it would be to the community if they uh, they they actually get the real Sub Zero in there. Uh, I mean, yeah, even if it's not even Sub Zero, at least like a cameo role or something like that. You could right, be a right. cop. You could be a cop. <laughs> Or some zero master or something like that. Right, right. Hey, if they made, if they made, I mean, they turned Baraka, who was just a grunty warrior, into a surgeon that kind of went crazy and did that stuff to himself. Right. So you know, they can make a cop that go. You, they can make you striker instead of yeah, an, right. instead of the overweight donut eating version that they put in. <laughs> the overweight donut eating version. Oh man. Go ahead, Natus. You got more questions. Um. From OBS Big D, John, what made you want to pursue a career in criminal justice? Well, I, I didn't really, um, I didn't uh, go to school for criminal justice. I went for exercise science, but, um, you know, that was another kind of strange thing. I got out of school and I, I didn't really didn't know what I wanted to do. At the time, there, you know, personal training wasn't really a big thing back in the, you know, the 80s. And, uh you know, I, I, I worked at a couple of health clubs and sold memberships and I just hated it and it just wasn't me. And at the time I had a friend who worked, you know, for the police department and uh, I told him, you know, hey, what should I do? And he said, hey, man, you know, you should be a cop. It's a, it's a good job. You know, you have good benefits and uh, it's, it's very secure. Why don't you give it a try? So I, I went and applied thinking, you know, I'm not going to get the job. I really don't know what I want to do, but I'll just act like I'm doing something. And when I walked in, there was like 400 people applying for one position and uh, there was policemen from other jurisdictions there so I thought for sure I'm not going to get hired but as the process went along there were like 10 total tests that we had to go through uh, I made it to one of the last 10 guys and uh, we had the oral interviews with the police to, you know fire commission and I think it was at that time I realized I mean I might get this job and uh, after the interviews the uh, lady called me and said hey you know I have some uh, good news and bad news. The good news is, or the bad news is, is you know, um, you're number two on the list. But the good news is we're not going to hire one person anymore. We're going to hire two. Do you want the job? And I just, uh, I said, yeah, sure. So kind of just fate took its way there. And, you know, and that's how I ended up getting into law enforcement. I really didn't plan a career. I had no intentions of really you know, looking for another job on another police department. It's just that happened to be the one I applied at, and uh, and that's where I got hired at. So it worked out really well. I, I, I loved the job. I was kind of sad when I had to go. Uh, but, uh, you know, the way I see it, one door closes, another one opens. And uh, I've had a lot of good opportunities now since, since I left, and uh, that's kind of where I'm at. All right. Now, let me ask a question. What are your current thoughts on the, on the latest Mortal Kombat game that came out? My my current source. The cur current thoughts. Oh my fuck! Uh, like, have I, you actually seen the game? No, I haven't even seen. I knew it just came out because uh, when the guy gave me this uh, this action figure dolly, told me about it, and I said, "Man, I got to check it out." You know, a lot of people might be asking me about that, but I haven't. And I work twelve hour days. I'm, I'm pretty busy, and I haven't had really a chance to do much of anything. You know, so I got to do that. Uh, uh, look for a link online or something, and see if I can scrounge it up and take a look but somebody did send me one uh actually no they did i did see it somebody sent me a link to it it was a video of of uh, uh a trailer for it and it looked really really cool and uh they had that other thing they were doing too where the dk comics or the uh the the dc mm -hmm. comics would uh pit one uh super fighter against another or one comic book character against another yeah it's the injustice game that's coming out yeah so i, I seen that that would be a pretty cool thing to do, but yeah, the actual game I saw a trailer for it looked really cool. The new one, so we'll see. You know, right, I'm going to ask you my last question. Do you know? Uh, do you personally know Chris Casamassa, the guy who played Scorpion in uh, the movie? No, I don't. Okay, so there you go, uh, Zato 1984. All right, Mister Natus, you got any more? No, I'm all out right now. Okay, good. Because he wants to go. He's got to get up early. Um, you're welcome here anytime. Like I, you know, I've been kind of keeping it under wraps, but eventually what I want to do is uh, I would like to uh, see if I can get like a reunion in one night where I get like, you know, three or four of you guys who haven't seen each other. Maybe get you, yourself, Leah, and Brian on at once. Sure. Um, you know, and do a couple of these reunion things. Um, everybody out there, uh, John Turk. Sub-Zero, 
Um, anything you want to promote? What is that, honey? Police. Ex police, yes. My wife is stuck on the, just the police portion. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? She comes from, uh, from Ecuador, and down yeah. there, like, you know, basically the highest thing you can be is a cop. No, it's not true. It's the best, at least in the women's eyes. If you're a cop, that means you got money, and you and you don't live in a in a dirt hut. <coughs> ain't the cops up here though? They got to be a little different. They're doing something different than we are. Well, let me tell you. You know, I mean, out here uh, on Long Island, the Suffolk County or Nassau, I can't remember which it is, is the highest paid police in the state in the in the country right now. Right. I mean, I think you come in. I think you come in at like forty seven thousand. That start. And, you know, I mean, the shenanigans that they play is your last your last year before retirement, uh -huh. whatever overtime you bank, that's what you're retiring with. So, like, you do nothing for, you know, you do your regular shifts, right. but that last year, you go and you work, like, you know, 100-hour weeks. Yeah, you work that 100-hour weeks, so when you retire, you bank. Wow. Yeah, they didn't do that for us. It was, you know, whatever you were making, whatever the top auto, you know, guy was making, that's what you got paid when you're, you know, if you made it there when you got retired, you know. So, yeah, it's you know, I, when I left, I think it was back in '98. It was fifty or forty-seven was what they were making top pay, and now they're I think the top guys making maybe. I mean, it's good money. Don't get me wrong. It's yeah, I think it it's is. eighty-five, eighty-five or so. And in the you're in the Midwest, so the, well, actually, you know, we have the highest tax rates here in Chicago. The highest, yeah. highest property, highest sales tax, the highest everything. I mean, it's highest gas. So cost. <coughs> Thank you, Obama. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, I had a cough. <laughs> sorry, guys, I don't get political. <laughs> um, you know, like I said, once again, you know, guys, John Turk, uh, your, your website, which is, uh, what again? www.fearlessfitnesstd.com. <laughs> Um, you know, like I said, I appreciate you coming on. I mean, I was glad you took the time out. Uh, everybody here obviously is, uh, yes, Obama sets state taxes when he works there. Um, now, see, now I turned it to political. I'm going to shut my mouth. I don't talk politics on this show because yeah, not one person here agrees with me except maybe you. Yeah, uh, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I'm from Chicago, and I know what kind of politics goes on here, and that's what's in the White House right now. So we'll just end it there. All right, guys, I'm going to let him go. John, thanks for coming on. Uh, anytime you want to come on here to promote anything, my wife says goodbye. Yep, take care. All right, John. Good to see you, everybody. Thanks for having me, and uh, we'll talk to you soon, man. All right, thanks All right man. On, thanks man. a lot. Take it easy. All right. All right. All right. Sorry, Limbo. I'm a piece of shit. That's right. Why? Because you're not in front of the camera no more. Come here and tell, just come over here and tell Limbo Dog you love him. Make him happy for a day. James, your mic cut off. All right. Um, all right, guys. Uh, the community leader, you know what? I'm going to bite my tongue for a minute. I'm going to really bite my tongue because I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a video and this video is a fun video. Hold on. Actually, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Before I go to a video. Your mic cut off again. Oh, there you go. But I want to see what he say. <laughs> Limbo dog, what are you? What is he? Uh oh. Where? Where's he? Limbo dog, right here. Where's oh. the Limbo dog? I oh him. my God, address him. He wants to hear from you. <laughs> Hello, how are you? He knows what he say. <laughs> George, you know what I'm saying, huh? Uh, yeah. I can hear him sing. Ah, uh, thank you. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> he like my hair. <laughs> How you doing, Limbo Dog? Oh, thank you. <laughs> How you doing? 
Oh my God, why? Are you crazy? Don't say like that. What's he saying? What? <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> oh my God, George, he listen. <laughs> no, George, probably he's right. <laughs> wow, the Spanish, why? <laughs> Mike, it's cut off again. Okay. Limbo dog. <laughs> oh my god, no. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, no. Okay, no. Porque usted tiene unas small penis? <laughs> oh god. Anyway, I'll let you go. It's nice to talk to you. Tell him you love him. Bye, I love you. Bye, guys, I love you. <laughs> Here you go, Limbo. Go jerk off to that. <laughs> all right um all right so now like i said i got uh mr uh I, he loves you more he said uh, love you. um i'm gonna uh, run the new and improved uh limbo dog song oh. he has a song uh, not limbo dog uh obs homeboy tyson i'm sorry <laughs> I'm about to say. Um, yeah i'm in another planet let me uh <laughs> Let me go to here. Hold on, guys. Uh. All right, guys. I have the new exclusive Limbo Dog. Was black and white and fat all the roll. Was black and white and fat all the roll. Was black and white and fat all the roll. Was black and white and fat. Was, was black and white and fat all over Digimon on and jobs fat hot pocket eating asses I may be gay, them two fucks are some real faggots Hot pocket nigga, hot pockets These two hot pocket fat fat finger bitches Cleveland play more Mortal Kombat So they went running like little bitches Like it's a little kid game called Tech Think they had a real try for that other queer Motown Wait, who I already went balls deep in May made them fart my cum out all over the ground Stay free, faggots It's, it's was black and white and fat all the roll. Was black and white and fat all the roll. Was black and white and fat all the roll. Was yeah, nigga, was black and white and fat all over. Was black and white and fat all over. Digimon on and jobs fat hot pocket eating asses. I may be gay, but them two fucks are some real faggots. Hot pocket nigga, hot pockets. These two hot pocket fat fat finger bitches couldn't play more Mortal Kombat. So they went running like little bitches, like it's a little kid game called Tech. Think they had a real try for that other queer Motown baby. Ooh, I already went balls deep in. May made him fart my cum out all over the ground. Stay free, faggots. It's hot pocket nigga, hot pocket. It was black and white and fat all the roll. Was black and white and fat all the roll. Was black and white and fat all the roll. Was black and white and. And as well as that, uh, homeboy Tyson was good enough to also give us a video. Hello. Oh, this video was funny. Hello. Ho. Did you hear about those two huge faggots on the Tekken podcast? Tekken? You mean that game that little children play? Yeah, fucking teddy bears and shit. Anyway, Hot Pocket Jop was talking shit about Mortal Kombat along with Eddie Pistons. Still to this day, no one knows who the fuck Eddie Pistons is. I heard he was the best Kitana player actually. But I think that was just a troll. Kind of like Great One being the best Kitana player. An obvious troll. And fucking Tom Brady didn't dick slap those bitches for talking shit about his game. They think for a game to be good it has to be boring as fuck. What a bunch of losers. Exactly. I heard Jop stick smells like the inside of a hot pocket. Gee, I wonder why. I heard Jop takes the inside part of the hot pockets and tosses Digimon salad with it. Makes it taste oh so sweet. Shit still probably stinks like your axe wound though. What the fuck? My axe wound doesn't smell. Hey, oh, bitch. Axe it wound. smells like hot dumpster juice on a human Florida summer day. Rotten fish melting in the sun. Tyson, <laughs> if you weren't so goddamn sexy, I would kill you, you asshole. Sorry, but I can't help out. Just waiting for NEC so I can have a Triforce between myself, Muxter, and Pig of the Hut. <laughs> 
I really hope you videotape that Tyson. Also the people that are leaving MK for Tekken can stay free. Yes, stay free faggots. <laughs> Uh, yeah, play this. <laughs> I'm gonna play this one one more time. Hello, ho. Did you hear about those two huge faggots on the Tekken podcast? Tekken? You mean that game that little children play? Yeah, fucking teddy bears and shit. Anyway, Hot Pocket Jop was talking shit about Mortal Kombat along with Eddie Pistons. Still to this day, no one knows who the fuck Eddie Pistons is. I heard he was the best Kitana player actually. But I think that was just a troll. Kind of like Great One being the best Kitana player. An obvious troll. And fucking Tom Brady didn't dick slap those bitches for talking shit about his game. They think for a game to be good it has to be boring as fuck. What a bunch of losers. Exactly. I heard Jop's dick smells like the inside of a hot pocket. Gee I wonder why. I heard Jop takes the inside part of the hot pockets and tosses Digimon's salad with it. Makes it taste oh so sweet. Shit still probably stinks like your axe wound though. What the fuck? My axe wound doesn't smell. Please bitch, it smells like hot dumpster juice on a human Florida summer day. Rotten fish melting in the sun. Tyson, if you weren't so goddamn sexy I would kill you, you asshole. Sorry but I can't help out. Just waiting for an EC so I can have a triforce between myself, Muxter, and Pig of the Hut. I really hope you videotape that Tyson. Also, the people that are leaving MK for Tekken can stay free. Yes, stay free, faggots. All right, guys. Uh, I just got this in. Uh, cross the streams. Uh, cross the streams is uh, basically it's uh, uh, Felice, uh, his own TV station he's got going on now. You can get it at uh, C underscore T underscore S underscore TV. Uh, you can also get Cross the Streams TV on Twitch.tv, YouTube, and Gmail. Um, hopefully it doesn't get banned. And hopefully you can avoid getting banned again, and that would be pretty damn cool. Uh, let me do a couple of shout-outs real quick. Um, first shout-out, shout-out to Check for his current videos out, trying to find out the Toasty Boozo glitch. Shout-out, Check! Um, second, uh... EDC Menace is doing an online tournament. It's on the MKU website on the Xbox uh, system. So, guys, if you're interested in doing that, I think it's a 32-man bracket. So, if you guys are interested in doing that, check out, uh, go over to MKU and uh, check out the thread for that. Um, uh, was it the only shout-out I had? I think so. Oh, shout-out to Triforce. Triforce is over at the Nintendo store. Currently, right now, in a month in advance, waiting online to get a uh, Nintendo uh, Wii U. I think he's trying to get a Guinness Book World Record by doing that. Um, he hasn't dis disclosed his details, but when someone asked at it, he kind of smiled. So I think he's got something to do with that. So, you know, shouts out to Triforce uh, on doing that. And it, it takes a lot of balls to stand out there for Nintendo Store for a month straight uh, before it's even out. So, James, go ahead. Uh, shout out to, uh, the, the newest members of OBS. We have, uh, OBS, uh, Beef Supreme. And we have another one that's in a nutshell coming to rape some of you guys at, uh, at Dallas with a vengeance. OBS Big D. Uh, two of the newest, uh, members of OBS. Uh, shout out to uh, my god he, I, I don't know if he got it yet I believe he collected his 50 bucks I already sent him his 50 bucks for winning the online tournament uh, last week at, uh, well yeah last week um, and I, I gave a uh, well we won't I've, the other person told me not to mention nothing so uh, you know Zato1984 you want to be OBS you know, you want to be OBS, it's very simple. The rules are simple. Don't be a bitch. Don't rage quit. Uh, don't turn around and send hate mail. And don't bitch about the game. You know what's wrong with it. Leave it at that. Just keep playing the game. I don't care if you win, lose. Can you please cut down your mic? No. For you, I can't, Pam. If anybody else asks me, I will. It, He's it, saying it's 400% louder. Well, that's because I'm, I'm swallowing the mic. Is that better? 
Yeah, that, that's yeah. probably better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had the mic in my mouth. I was trying to go balls deep on the mic. Um, you know, yeah, Zato, uh, that's not a problem. Then you're in. And our newest member is 809, OBS 80 1984. You got to okay. make sure to write that down so you have that list. Yeah, right. I got that. You know, and, and one of the things is anybody that I've told, and it's not to sound like a, a forgetful old bastard, but, uh, you know, we're up to around 50 members. I do want to uh, compile a better list of all the people that are OBS now. Um, like I said, it's not mandatory that you sport OBS at every tournament. Um, we're not a we're not a brand. We're not a market that we're trying to get you guys to sell. It's just basically saying that you know we as a community are sticking together and we ain't going nowhere. And as uh, homeboy, homeboy Tyson best described it, those faggot Tekken players are not going to break us up. Yeah. Um, which brings me on to my next issue. I am hoping right now, within the next five minutes, my next guest contacts me. Because if he doesn't contact me, he might as well not show up to NEC. Um... You know, I was told he was going to be here, and ironically, he's not. Exactly, Felice. Um, I don't care what somebody's issues are. If you're busy, if you say you're going to do something, do it. You know, and and he he contacted me that he wanted to come on, and I said yes. I said I got John Turk coming on, and then after that. You know, uh, stop being stingy with the little bites. They've been in the background for like 10 weeks now. <laughs> nah, that's an, empty, that's an empty box. I just got like a bunch of paper and, and mail and shit like that in there. Um, but yeah, so I don't know what to tell you about him uh, right now. Let me, uh, let me check something quick. Oh, see, yeah, uh, sorry. Sorry, uh, oh, man, I fucking missed that. Okay. What? Uh, somebody wanted me to show a video to, to, to Turk, and I didn't because I, I didn't see it until just now. So, uh, Cap, Cap Con Singulari, I'm sorry I didn't uh, get an opportunity to show that. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Mr. Felice. You uh, you got your mic and all that shit set up because you know what this is going to be now? Because Brady, not only did he not defend the game and bitched out to some fat po pocket-eating motherfucker, but now he dicked out on the community who was basically expecting him to play. Um, yeah, happy birthday, Napalm. You're 34. Kano sucks dick and your ass is a whore. I'll bang you in the ass, I'll go balls deep on you, and when I'm done, I'll bust a nut, and there ain't shit you can do. There you go. Happy birthday. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I'm going to invite uh, Mr. Felice in here right now, because I'm pretty pissed at Brady. That really pisses me the fuck off. Mr. Community can't show up to anything. Oh, man, I'm really fucking pissed right now. What's up there, uh, Mr. Furlease? What's up, Furlease? Can't... Oh, shit, my phone. Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. We hear you. We hear you now. Ah, oh, you dropped him. Release? No, he put me on hold, I think. You put me on hold, Felice. How fucking dare you? Don't you know who I am? <laughs> Hello? Yeah, you're back. Weird. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mr. Brady was supposed to be on after Turk. I figured what better person to have. Um, is Denzel in the room? That would be really cool because I could put the real Sub-Zero in here. Because apparently that <laughs> fake-ass scrubby Sub-Zero is too important to fucking get back to us. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Felice, uh, what say you? Um, well, first of all, you know, he did this to the Wule show, too. Where he was supposed to be on as our main guest, and he didn't show up. Yeah, so that basically means homeboy Tyson, Mr. OBS homeboy Tyson, I need a balls deep fucking ass raping cum spooging video and song and dance for Tom Brady exclusive. 
That'd be pretty funny. And, and we will air that next week on the show as soon as you get that done for us. <laughs> well, I was contemplating if I should put them on blast for this, but it kind of it, it really pisses me off on a whole different level than not even showing up for the Wule show or whatever. Because it's beyond that. It's kind of more of like the friendship part. <clears throat> exactly. Like actual friendship. But, um, sorry. I should mute my phone. Here we go. Okay. So, basically, um, <clears throat> I don't think we named any names last time, even though I will. But we were talking about somebody who got stuck in Virginia or something and they couldn't get home. Triforce was talking about it. Tom Brady. Right. I don't know if it was actually said that it was actually no, it Tom wasn't. Brady who was stuck. No, it wasn't. No, I wasn't. we were trying to keep that on the wraps, but. I mean, now I don't care. But he basically was stuck. I mean, I still really don't know who he was staying with or whatever. Like, for sure. But, um, you know, he was stuck out there. And, you know, um, <clears throat> Triforce was telling me about it. And, you know, he, he didn't really, like, ask me for anything, Triforce. But he was saying how he was just trying to get him. To, uh, like, he had basically Brady had somebody he could stay with and, like, another state or something something like south carolina or something so basically triforce just wanted to get him there for a couple more days until he was able to help him out to get home or whatever the case was <clears throat> so i was nice enough and i actually uh paypal triforce 20 bucks to help brady out whether it's for food or his travel or whatever you know helping him out because even though you know it's his fault for getting into that situation but Still, I, I decided to help him out. And I just sent him 20 bucks, you know, no big deal, whatever. And...